In this video, I'm going to show you how to add two more features to the, to the Monte Carlo VBA code we've already built. All right, the first feature is going to be to turn off screen updating. One thing that you can see when we do this is that it very quickly runs through all these lines of code. All right, the fact that it's showing us that and it's updating the visual display to us actually slows the computer down quite a bit. So as you start running these VBA programs and as you're running big Monte Carlo simulations, you don't want to waste time updating it so the user can see when instead the code could run much more quickly without that screen updating taking place. So let's create another version of our code that's going to run a little bit faster because we're going to turn that off. So let's flip back over. Let's take our code, make a new version. We're going to make version three now. And we're going to start at the very beginning by turning screen updating off. So if we use application.screenUpdating, it pops up for us. We're just going to set that equal to false. So turn off screen updating. And this is just going to make our program run a little bit faster. You always want to remember if you turn off screen updating, we'll go ahead and turn it back on once you're done with your code. So we'll say turn back on screen updating by putting it to true at the end. Now it's going to run just a little bit faster as a result, and I'll actually show you this. Let's set this to run 100 times, and we'll set our earlier code to run 100 times as well. We'll just kind of look at the difference between with and without the screen updating. So let's flip back over. We'll start without the screen updating, or sorry, with the screen updating. So we see it flash a bunch, and we saw all 100 trials run. Versus, let's run it without the screen updating. It's still going to take a little bit of time, but it actually went quite a bit quicker and it gave us all 200 values without giving us that flashing light and showing us all the screen updating that it was doing. So it's going to save us some time and make it a little bit more pleasant of a user experience. Now the other feature that I want to show you is that we don't necessarily have to use copy paste. So copy paste can be a convenient way to do it. However, we can directly reference the values that we have in those cells G11 and H11 and store those in variables in our spreadsheet. So let's see how we would do that. So I'm going to call those, I'm going to use result one as an integer. That's going to be the dice, the, the, the sum of the two rolls. So that's always going to be an integer variable. I'm going to dim result two as a string because that's going to be a word that is win, lose, or draw. So we're going to initiate our two variables there. Now, instead of using this range to select and copy, we're going to adapt this code by saying, let's take range G11, and we're going to take its value. So the property of that cell, one of the properties of it, there are lots of properties like, you know, what color is it? Is it highlighted? How is it formatted? What number is stored in it, right? That's going to be the dot value. We're going to set that equal to result one. And actually, I mixed that up. We're going to say result one is equal to that value. So importantly, what happens first is it determines what's on the right-hand side. So we're going to take the value in G11 and assign that to the variable result1. All right. We're then going to take that same line of code. Let's just adapt it. So copy that. And we're going to say that result2 is equal to the value in H11. So now we've taken G11 and H11 and stored them as variables in our code. So we're just relying a little bit more on the code and less on the copy-paste functionality of Excel. So we no longer need this copy piece. However, now to output to our cells, now we're going to have to set the values of those cells equal to result one and result two. So we're going to, instead of paste values, we're going to set values, and we're storing model output rather than copying it. So a little bit just different change in how we're saying this. So now to set the value, we can set the value of the cell. So we can say selection.value is equal to result one. All right, so notice right now we haven't set anything about result two. So let's see what that looks like when we go over to our model. So we're gonna run this copy paste v3. And let's actually change the name now since we're no longer copy pasting. We'll call it Monte Carlo direct reference v3, since we're storing those values, or actually, let's use that name, store value, store values, all right? 
change it so it's a little bit more descriptive. So we're flipping back over. Let's clear this out so it's easier to see. And let's run our new code. So we run store values. And what we see is we got 100 runs of the total of the roles. So we only got the roles. We didn't get the win, lose, or draw. So we need to make sure we get that as well. So flip them back over. Now we need to do selection.value equals result two. But we, before we do that, we have to select a different cell. Otherwise, we're going to be stuck in that column K. We need to get over to column J. Sorry, column L. So go from K to L. We need to use our offset command one more time. So let's take our selection offset. We're going to use it one more time. But instead of going to cell down, we're going to go to cell to the right. So here we're going to set offset 0, 1 instead of 1, 0. So now we're going to go down, store the number of rolls, go to the right, store the answer. Restart, go to the bottom, go down one, store the number, the, the sum of the rolls, go to the right, store the outcome. All right, let's check this out. Let's actually flip back to 10 rolls just so we don't use too much space up. And let's clear this out so we can see everything and let's run it one more time. So now we do store values and there we see all 10 answers Output real quick, we had screen updating turned off, and now we're relying a little bit more on our VBA code and less on the copy pasting from the spreadsheet.